Morning everyone. Welcome to another Compliance Over Coffee. I have got more coffee here. I think where we've moved to, you know, I don't think you can see the, uh, the small plants that we have on the side there. I'll just lower the screen a little bit. We've got some little pansies, some winter flowering pansies inside. They're absolutely beautiful. Just thought I'd show you. Anyway, this morning, solicitors. A lot of sourcing agents that I talk to and I see posts online say the solicitor is handling the compliance review checks for them. We leave our a &L checks to the solicitor because when the purchase is going through, the solicitors carry out the a &L checks. And for some unknown reason, I'm not sure why, as a society, we put solicitors on these pedestals. And from experience over almost 63 years now, people have a habit of falling off pedestals. And it was interesting because, I don't know if Tony was researching or not, but an article landed in his lab. And I've got some details written down because I wanted to share them with you because I'd never seen anything like this before. However, solicitors are not the angels that we all believe they are when it comes to doing everything that they should be doing legally. And there is such a body called the Solicitors Reg Regulation Authority. You can research this if you want. The SRA, Solicitors Regulation Authority. And they have an annual AML report. And they do desktop checks, just like HMRC do, but they do it on their members. Now, this up-to-date report, they carried out checks on 224 solicitor firms. 43 were compliant, 115 were partially compliant, and 66 were non-compliant. The three main areas of failure were inadequate risk assessments, policies, controls and procedures, inadequate staff supervision, inadequate processes allowing events to happen and go unchecked. Now, for all of you guys that think solicitors will do what they should do and protect your back, think again. Because looking at those figures, if you expanded them to the solicitors across the UK, partially compliant and non-compliant equates to over 180 out of 224 that didn't meet standards. So the chances are that you will meet one that doesn't meet standards and it will not protect your back at all in any way, shape or form. And if you solely rely on someone else's compliance and you haven't checked what standards they meet, what they do, what their processes and procedures are, and that you haven't confirmed yourself that they meet national minimum standards, you will be held jointly responsible. And trust me when I say this won't just be the solicitor sector, this will be any other professional sector that we work with that is supervised by HMRC or any other uh, of the supervisory bodies from a laundry. So relying on third parties, regardless of who that is, could lead you into serious trouble. You have to understand this stuff for yourself. And you have to own responsibility because if you don't, no one else is going to own your responsibility for you. So on that serious note, <laughs> let's end compliance over coffee this morning with a bit of a smile. I have got my coffee. In fact, it's full and I've barely touched it. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. I hope if you're going to celebrate uh, November the 5th, you have great fun and I hope it's dry where you are. We're hoping it will be dry so that we can go up to the uh, local bonfire and uh, firework display. Uh, there's two actually, one on Friday and one on Saturday. So I hope you have a fabulous weekend and I will see you again next Thursday at the usual time about 8.30 in the morning. Bye for now.